Hello. Okay, so let's talk about reporting child abuse. I've had tons and tons and tons of people message me asking um, how to report and uh, like what is considered child abuse and what, you know, what they should report and all sorts of questions. But um, one message really stuck out to me recently, <clears throat> just this last week or whatever. Um, this girl, she sent me this long, long, long message and, um, you know, she just went on and on about how she felt like she, because she's just a very like non-confrontational type person. Um, she was just like, basically I'm terrified to report anything. Like if I think it's child abuse, it freaks me out because I'm so scared to, um, to report it because, you know, do I have to tell them who I am? Do I, will they, the people know that I'm the one that reported what, you know, all of this stuff, <clears throat> excuse me. And so, um, and she was like, you know, and there's a lot of things that I feel like are child abuse. Yeah, yeah. So every state, it varies from state to state. Every state's different, but unless you are a mandated reporter, most of the time you can report anonymously so that helps a lot you know so if it's you know your neighbor like someone you have to live next door to or um a close friend or maybe a relative or something like in your you want to do what's best but you also don't want to make thanksgiving awkward um you can report anonymous anonymously unless you're a mandated reporter if you're a mandated reporter it doesn't matter what the circumstance is you should be, you have to report, you know what I mean? And I know a lot of mandated reporters don't report and that's disgusting. You should be reporting. If you're a mandated reporter and you're not reporting, um, you should probably should like, I, I, I don't know, just you should, everybody should please, please, please report. I always say that like, you should do two things when you report too. Um, one, you can't just call the police you can't just call DHS or like child, you know, social services because one is like an immediate, you know, like temporary fix. One is a, a long-term fix, but they have to work together. You always want to call the police right away, you know, um, and police are, you know, cops are trained on, like signs more than you know just the normal citizen is and so always call the cops and you know if a, a child is in like an immediate danger you know call the cops even if they're not in immediate danger if they've got you know bruising across multiple surface planes of their you know body or if they've got um bruising on the back of their neck um you know things that are just like you know, bruises that look like certain objects, wire hangers or <clears throat> ropes or, I mean, just, uh, all the, you know, just, just call the cops. But you can't just call the cops. You have to call and report it to DHS too. Um, it takes a matter of like minutes, you know, and it is, it just, I mean, it, that's the best way to report is to call both, you know, to a call to DHS and a call to social services, you know, for like child protective services. And you call child protective services, try to have the child's address, you know, parent's name, um, where they attend school at, um, you know, obviously like what the problem is and, you know, if it's, um, maybe one of your kid's friends or something and they like come stay the night and they've got wicked bruising all over, um, are like hoarding food. Like you think that they're not being, you know, fed or, uh, whatever it may be. Try to get some pictures even, you know, but so those are the two main things. Everybody's always like, well, do I call DHS or do I call the police? You call both because, both of both both are overworked and underpaid but when together 
it will get the job done a lot quicker. You know what I mean? Like it's the likelihood of it being investigated is it skyrockets if you have both. Um, so that was just, I wanted to just do a, like a quick video on, you know, how to report. Like I said, it's different. I mean, different states, it varies from state to state, you know, she asked, the same girl asked, what is, you know, like a reportable, you know, offense if it's, you know, if someone's like yelling in their child's face or, um, obviously if they're like physically assaulting a child right there in front, you know, yes. But, you know, emotional abuse a lot of the time leads to physical abuse. So if they are referring to their kid as like worthless or uh, just don't really have any concern for their child's well-being, um, even though you're not seeing them physically abusing their child, a lot of that stuff goes hand in hand. So just because they're showing you this and they're not showing you, like, you have no idea what's going on behind closed doors. And I promise you that if you accidentally, like, report, if you, if you report somebody and it was, it's like a misunderstanding or something, that person, like, there are, unfortunately, some people that like, get some kind of weird pleasure out of, like, falsely reporting people to child services, and, um, you hear stories about that all the time, and that is so disgusting, and so immature, and just so pathetic, um, and, like, God bless you, you know, like, I just, it, that makes me nuts, because that is what the holdup is on a lot of actual cases getting investigated, because they have to weed through all of the BS cases, too, which, um, is nuts, but, um, I promise you, if you report somebody and they are, it, and it ends up being something that's, like, explainable, that person would rather go through that little, like, headache of, you know, being, like, you know, falsely reported or whatever every day for the rest of their life than, for their child to be, you know, like being abused by stepdad or big brother or something and them not doing it and nothing happened. You know what I mean? So it's very important. Just, I mean, it's up to us as like PTA moms and coaches and youth leaders and neighbors and you know like my house is the house that all the kids like to hang out at my house like all the neighborhood kids I've got kids coming and going from my house all day every day so if you're that mom like keep your eye out you know if you're those parents like we have to decide that what happens to our children is more important than protecting someone's reputation. If it's someone who is a doctor or, you know, someone who is a politician or somebody, you know, and you're like, no, that would, it happens every single day and they come in all shapes and sizes and forms and it doesn't matter their religion or, you know, their ethnicity or their social standing or, you know, anything. It happens every day. So, like, we as adults have to stand up for kids because kids are voiceless. And so, if you think something is happening, but you think, oh, no, no, there's no way because he's a doctor, or there's no way because, you know, mm, he's a senator, or no, that's just, they are, they come from like a really nice family and mm, no, they're in church every Sunday. It happens all the time, every day with those people, you know, it happens with everybody. So until we like can be responsible adults and be vigilant because almost every high profile child abuse case or all of the, a lot of these baby baby murders or toddler murders, 
a lot of these, there's warning signs and red flags, and they just either are being ignored or people don't know what red flag, like, I'm going to be honest, I didn't know what the word gaslighting meant until just a few months ago. Swear. Did, had no idea. I didn't know that was a term. I had never heard that in my life. And I'll go into that later. But, you know, so there's just, just please, 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 please report. Because until we can, you know, as adults, like, be responsible and really, like, take it into our own hands. Because I know so many people attack DHS all the time. DHS is overworked and underpaid. Those people are stacked sky high. And it's, they're not with our kids all day, every day. You know, like, they're not seeing. I see the neighbor kids four days a week for at least a couple hours probably you know DHS isn't seeing, isn't seeing those kids that much you know and so um we really just have to open our eyes and and not be scared of you know causing an issue or being wrong or any of that like you just have to do it because you owe it to that child so all right thanks bye